Hi, welcome back to Kolsky Drones. So today we're going to have a look at the SJRC Z5. So a couple of weeks ago, probably a month ago now, I reviewed this, the big brother of this, which was the F11. And this is its baby brother. So this has got brushed motors and is quite a bit smaller. So let's see what you get in the box first. So in the box you get the controller, the drone itself, and then underneath you get a USB charging cable, a spare set of props, and an instruction manual. Let's get rid of the box out of the way. So let's have a look at the drill. So as you can see, it is quite a bit smaller. I'll show you in a second how much smaller. And it has got brushed geared motors. So let's just open it up. So it'll only open one way, and I think it's that way around. Yeah. So front come towards the back, back go towards the front. There you go. So that's the drill. Okay. So let me show you the difference between that one and that one. So this one is its big brother. As you can see, there's a massive difference in size between the two. This one's obviously of a much higher quality as well. The build quality on this is far, far better. The way that it opens its hands, everything about this is much better build quality. But this should have the same camera as this in and the flight time still 15 minutes. So I've, and I've seen some videos and this looks really good. So let's see what it's like. Just put the F11 out of the way because I'm not going to talk about that one today. So like I say, it's got a 5G, 1080p, 30 frames per second camera. Adjustable from the transmitter in the same way that the F11 was. Underneath you can see it's got lots of vent holes and what looks like an optical flow sensor which is just a dummy because I presume on one of these they're going to make an optical flow. So if you look at the arms you can see the lock mechanism. Yeah, you can see that there, see how it locks? That clicks into there. Locks nice and firmly, there's no play in the arms whatsoever or virtually nothing. Very nicely built. The battery goes in the top. So as you can see, the battery is a similar design to the F11, but much, much, much smaller because it doesn't need to have it. I think it's 1100 milliamp power. Still charges the same way from a USB charger, but charges quite a bit quicker than the F11. So as you can see, top, uh, the front arms are actually higher than the back. So the props are higher at the back than they are at the front. You can see that. Marginal, but there's not much in it. So this is the controller. So obviously, if you've seen this before, you've probably seen it in black. I bought the white one because it was just different. No other reason than the fact I fancy something a little bit different. The controller is the same controller as the F11. This is just the white version, obviously. Opens up there, and then your smartphone goes in there. Now, when I got the F11, I think I remember doing the review and saying, oh, the controller feels a bit cheap. But then when I flew with it, I thought it was great. The resolution was fantastic on the stick. So in the same way as the F11, these open and come down. So you grip it this way and you fly it like this. It's mode two out of the box. If you want to make it mode one, you press that button in there, which is for your, ca your camera, and you turn it on. It'll do two beeps and that puts it into mode one. If you turn it back off again, it reverts back into mode two. So for me, it's great because it goes back, I can get to fly in mode one. So that's the controller. I like the controller because of the way that it feels when you fly it. It is rechargeable, it charges up from the USB port which is on the side here. And I think it's a 350 milliamp hour battery that's in there. But the black one's got the same battery and I've only charged the black one. I've had four or five flights and it's still on the same charge. So there's not going to be an issue with the flight time, with the flight time from there. So let's turn it on. So Single press to turn on the drone, and then single press to turn on the controller. And then I've left it in mode two, so up and down on your sticks to bind. And there we go. So as you can see, it's bound. It's bound to it. And the camera, as in the first one, moving yeah, it's very slow you can see it moving up and down when I hold the wheel in 
God, that's slow. Yes, it does make the annoying beep, and it will make the annoying beep when you press the record button. It goes beep, beep, beep as it's recording to the SD card. If you record to your phone and just save the video footage to your mobile device and pull it off afterwards, there is no noise. So, with the only issue I ever had with the F11 was that it sometimes didn't work, the SD card sometimes wouldn't work for some unknown reason and I found out it's got to have an 8 gig card or if you put an 8 gig card then it's fine so we've got a slot in the side here and your card goes in there so now it's got the card and you can see it's lit up okay so let's connect it to the app so the app it runs on is exactly the same app as the F11 does which is, if I can remember what it's called Seems like ages since I've flown this. Where is the app? Yeah, SJ GPS Pro. So before we need to do that, we need to connect it up to our Wi-Fi signal. Let's just wait for it to find it. It's 5G. So SJ GPS Pro. So they do this in a 720p version and a 10, 1080p version. They also do it in a 1080p version that isn't 5G. That's just 2.4 and then they do the 1080p 5G version, which is what this is. And um, they do it one and two batteries. There was a flash sale at the minute. When I bought this, it was in a flash sale. And I believe you still can get it at a flash sale at Banggood if you're interested in one. So let's just connect it. And let's go back into the app. So this is the app. So on the side, it allows you to change between Z5, uh, F7 and F11. But we want Z5 anyway. We want to go quick start. We can ignore all this actually. So this gives you the manual actually. I don't know how it quick start, but never mind. And then we want to go in controls. We're going to go into controls. And there we go. So if you can see me moving the drone, it's got a little bit of lag. You're always going to get some kind of lag. And it's worse in here because I've got so much thing, so much stuff turned on. The camera I'm using has got is a 5G camera that I'm using to record this on and I think the Wi-Fi is turned on at that as well so I need to turn that off but you can see it's got a bit of lag but I think you can see on the screen that the quality is there so let's check out the controls on the app so on the top here you've got what looks like a control if you click that button it will open up all these other icons so you've got follow me mode return to home take off land and on the other side you've got gesture mode take a picture take a video and that's grayed out so you follow me mode if you go into it it obviously won't let me do it because do I want to continue well I'm obviously not in the air so I'm not going to do the follow me mode but we'll, I'll show you more of that in the flight video when I do that and then here you've got your if you click on that one you get your map so this is what you use to do your waypoints so you can put your waypoints on and then what you would do is send send it to the drone and it will do the waypoints. Again, we'll discuss that in a bit flight video when I do it. So come out of there. So the app is quite basic, but that's your flight records. Mine's got some flight records in here because it's the same app as the F11. So the flight footage I've got there is the F11. And then you can put it into VR mode, which I'm not going to do. So you can have the twin side by side so you put it in set goggles. So that's the app. And then you've got your drone battery and your battery for the controller down there so I don't know how accurate that is because I know the battery on the controller is not fully charged and it's sailing me it is so mm, strange anyway and then here you've got your parameters if you go into here so you can adjust your beginner flight distance flight altitude and return to home altitude and if you save them you can come out of them it will save them and it does actually stay on the phone because they're my original ones I had from the F11 so it doesn't move and there's your GPS signal there left the video recorded you can obviously start and stop video from your controller but you get the video noise and as you can see it's flashing on the screen and then similarly you can press the button here to take a photo well they're taking photos okay the, that's the app the other thing you can do with this if you've long press this button 
it takes it in and out of altitude home mode so you can take the GPS off the GPS on there what you need to do with this is of course calibrate the compass so that's why it's flashing at me it wants me to calibrate the compass and it's a simple matter of turning it round you know the typical way you do until the lights change it won't do it in here I don't think and then up and down I'll show you that when we do the flight video so my initial impressions are this so I obviously haven't flown it yet I've literally took it out of the box yesterday but I've just done the video today so I'm going to be hard pressed not to compare it a little bit to this now this is my major thing so I got this on a, a flash sale and on a flash sale this was £40 less than this when it isn't in a flash sale there's only £20 in difference now I can just tell you now this thing is so much better built than this absolutely but this is a, I'm not going to compare this to. So what we're going to compare this to is, if you've been watching, I compare everything to the Vizio XS812, which is another folding 1080p drone. So we'll be comparing it to that, not to this. But the one thing I have noticed is the build quality is much, much different. And this seems, a, the F11 now seems an even bigger bargain since I've seen this. The camera's the same. It's got a, it's the same way of mounting the SD card. It records directly to it. So... The footage should be comparable to the F11 apart from the fact it probably won't be as bit, a bit as quite stable because it's not got the same powerful brushless motors, this has got brush motors. Apart from that we should be very similar. So thanks ever so much for watching, I will get a flight video up very shortly on it so you can see how it flies and we'll go through some of the functions and I'll also do my favourite which will be compare this to the XS812, let's see if it takes its crown away because in me, to me the XS812 is the best brushed GPS drone at the minute that's a reasonable price, I think that's still 80 quid and this is around that money so thanks ever so much for watching, have a fantastic day. <laughs>